What's up nail friends? Today's video is going to be something completely different on my channel that I haven't done before. This may not be for everyone, and I understand, so if it's not, I'll see you guys in the next video. But this is the kind of content I enjoy watching, so I thought I would do a version on my channel. This idea was highly inspired by Bailey Sarian's Murder Mystery and Makeup Mondays and Robert Welsh's Ghost Stories and Makeup. But I'm doing my own version of ghost stories, creepy stories, and nail art, and the nail art will go with the story. Before getting into the story, I just wanted to let you guys know that I had this original story made specifically for this video. I found someone on Fiverr or Fiverr, not sure how you say that, and I had someone create me the story and I've paid them to monetize it. So, if you guys are interested in that, just keep watching. This story is called The Lost Child. It all happened three years ago in the middle of nowhere, Michigan. This was a small town full of farms and long stretches of road. Everyone seemed to know everyone, though it was just big enough that townsfolk could get lost on their way home and still meet new people at the gas station or the local coffee shop. It was very cute. Jody hated it. Jody told everyone she was a city girl born among the hicks. Jody wasn't a mean girl, or at least she didn't mean to be, but she had a mouth on her. If a teacher started talking down to her, she couldn't resist snapping back, and her brother was a prime example. Eight-year-old Michael was a normal kid. That is to say he was an excitable ball of energy, and sometimes he got on Jody's last nerve. That day, he grabbed the remote from his sister to hit play on his favorite Lego movie DVD for the fourth time in a row. It's my turn, Jody snapped. But you weren't watching during the chase scene. You gotta watch the chase scene. It's the best part of the movie, Michael explained. The movie you've put on four times, Jody sneered, snatching the remote back. Look, Michael, I'm putting in what I want because it's my turn, and then we'll watch it once. You know why? Because if you have to watch a movie four times in order to get enjoyment out of it, it's not a good movie. Michael's eyes willed with tears. Lego Movie is the best movie. He pulled a little Lego man out of his pocket and shoved it in his older sister's face. Apologize now! You think I'm gonna apologize to you over a Lego movie? She rolled her eyes. Michael puffed out his little chest. No, apologize to him. I'm never going to watch the stupid movie with you again. Jody shoved the little Lego man out of her brother's hand and onto the floor. Michael burst into tears. It didn't take long for their mother to come in to his aid, and she swept the little boy in her arms and quickly returned the toy to him. Then her gaze fell on Jody. Jody was grounded. No friends over or movie privileges for two weeks, unless she apologized. Jody texted all her friends about how unfair it was and how her mom never listens to her side. But it was her best friend, Marilyn, who texted back, why not do something about it? Let's give the kid something to cry about. Maybe then he'll stop going to your mom about every little thing. Jody wasn't a mean girl, but she was definitely mean. She came out and told Michael just how sorry she was, even going as far as to apologize to the stupid Lego toy that he carried around everywhere before she suggested a movie. Sure, it wasn't the Lego movie, but it was a movie that all Jody's friends loved. Then Jody pretended to hesitate. Then again, you're eight. Maybe we should stick to something little kids like. That was all it took. After two and a half hours of watching psycho slasher tear victims apart, Michael was jumping every shadow. He literally was shaking when he took out the trash. He tossed the bag into the can with a loud bang. A raccoon scrambled away, and Michael turned around to do the same when he saw that between him and the house were five psycho slashers. The one in front of the door held a shiny red chainsaw in hand. As the chainsaw revved, Michael stumbled backwards and ran as fast as his little legs could take him, screaming. The chainsaw noises died as laughter filled the group of murderers. They took off their masks, and there stood Jody with her dad's new chainsaw among with her friends. When the laughter died away, she exclaimed, You should have seen your face. But Michael was gone. A cold wave of anxiety swept through Jody. It didn't let up. Even hours after, a few hundred townspeople canvassed the town, checking fields and dirt roads, foot by foot, for something, anything. None of Jody's friends could find the right words to say, and Jody's own mother couldn't even look at her. Jody wouldn't blame her if she never spoke to her again. Michael was eight. Anything could have happened to him. Anything. And there was no one to blame but Jody. Sure, her friends helped her and even came up with the idea, but in the end, Jody was his big sister. It was her job to protect him. Sure, to mess with him a little, but once upon a time, Jody never had let any of her friends mistreat her brother. She wondered where she lost that. 
The moon was high and cold above the tiring rescue parties. The Michigan town was little, but it was much bigger stepping into the darkness of the forest, searching farm after farm as daylight tricked away and left a distinct hopelessness in the air. Especially as many of the searchers had just been up and awake long enough before the sun replaced the moon. Jody stepped forward, it was alone. Everyone else had to stop for the night. The darkness made it impossible to even see their own footsteps, let alone spot any clues or tracks. So the people made guilty agreements among themselves to be back by sunrise, when at least some light could give them guidance. Coming back, Jody, a voice called, but Jody shook her head. How could she return without her little brother? How could she go back to that house where the sheriff told her mother to just wait, just in case he came home, and say she quit? How could she face her mother? How could she even sleep knowing he wasn't in the room down the hall? She couldn't. So Jody stepped in the forest, the leaves cracking and breaking like bones beneath her boots. The darkness swallowed her whole. There was nothing but her footsteps and her heartbeat, except, was there something behind her? No, Jody was certain there wasn't. But the fear rising in her throat made her swallow tightly. She picked up her phone to look behind her, but the blue light showed nothing but leaves and bugs. She continued marching, but as she stepped forward, she imagined she could feel the brush of a long, sharp claw on her leg, on her shoulder, on the back of her neck. It's nothing, Jody choked. It's nothing, no one's here. Hear me, you're not real. A voice <laughs> chuckled and Jody spun around, dropping her phone in the leaves, but not before she saw what she thought was a great shadow towering from the trees. Something came flying past her at a glance. Jody knew it was a shoe, her brother's shoe. He was here, he was in the forest. Jody was running before she knew it. She wanted to believe she imagined it, but his voice was clear as day and seemed to settle into her bones like ice water. She wanted her phone with that little bit of light, but she wouldn't turn back. She didn't know what that thing was. She wanted out of the forest with the loud crunch of drying leaves, the hissing of bugs still left, and those tall, terrifying shadows that seemed to try to swallow her whole. She wanted her mother to ground her and yell at her. She wanted the safety of her room, but she would not leave, not without Michael. She couldn't leave him in this nightmare realm. The forest was like a fairy dream in the daylight, but at night, no one went into the forest at night. Jody used to think it was paranoia and fear that stopped people, but just the thought of that laughter spurred on her faster. Michael was only eight. Jody broke through a tiny clearing where a small figure stood, staring up at an oak tree. Michael, Jody called, relief nearly knocking her over. Michael, but the figure was not Michael. The figure was a child, no older than Michael, but this was a little girl. She was in a faded nightgown and shoeless, she wasn't the eight-year-old she wanted to see, but Jody wasn't a mean girl. So, she might have been in search for her brother, but she wouldn't walk past a child alone, not even wearing shoes. Jody knelt down beside the girl. Hello, are you lost? No reply, not even a slight movement. The child seemed content to stand locked in place. I'm Jody, what is your name? Jody whispered. Silence once again. A little chill went down Jody's spine. Um, I can take you home if you'd like, Jody says. Again, nothing. This child was so still that Jody couldn't tell if she was even breathing. I'm out here looking for my brother. He's lost too, she tried one more time. Then the little girl's head snapped to the side with a loud crunch. Jody fell backwards and the little girl smiled so big that Jody could count the fangs within the child's too wide grin. Every tooth was yellowed and sharpened into a fine point with tiny spots. She gashed her teeth in excitement and leaned in to grab Jody's head on either side of her face. Every single moment came with tiny cracks and crunches that made Jody nauseous. The little girl dug her nails into Jody's skin before whispering, You better hurry, it likes children. Then the little girl pressed a kiss to Jody's forehead. Cold anxiety like stone settled into Jody's stomach. She was paralyzed with fear, but it was then Jody had an awful sense of understanding before the smiling child pushed her, tumbling down cliffside on either side of the tree. She went rolling over bushes and crashing into rocks before she managed to grab a handful and pull herself to what looked like a cave entrance. Jody huffed and puffed, heaving herself up onto the rock floor. The moon shined down between the trees and the entrance of the cave, but it was a small gift after tumbling several feet down a steep cliff. She felt prickles of pain everywhere. Her fingers left bloody trails where she touched. She was okay, or at least as okay as she could be. Nothing felt broken. She let out a long breath before she froze. There was a huddled shape at the end of the cave. She could just barely see the outline from a tiny bit of moonlight shining through. 
She crept closer to the figure, fearing a bear or another child monster. But when she got close enough, she stepped on a tiny Lego man that her brother had always had. The shape was her baby brother. He was so still. He looked dead. No, 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 no. She whispered as she scrambled over. She searched for a heartbeat, but her own stomach was rolling at the sight. It took three tries, but Michael was alive. Jody gathered him up tight and heaved him over her shoulder. She couldn't feel his breath on her ear at all, and the quiet fear that he was dead kept hammering at her, knowing that his heart was going strong. Jody was afraid, but she was more afraid to wait for something to come for her and Michael. The forest was alive, and if Jody wanted to live as well, she knew to her core she had to leave before it ate her, or worse. Jody slid down the side of the cliff, thankful that the bottom was less steep. She only tripped a couple of times and none of them were enough to send Michael rolling off her back. She wandered around the bend where she found a light trail. It led away from where she came from the forest, but she was okay with that. Jody watched the moon as she walked, stumbling over rough patches of dirt and pokey bushes. The light touched her arm and made the hairs on the back of her neck stand up, but Jody did not look. It's a bug, she whispered. She did not know what it was. She hoped it was a bug. Jody walked and walked and walked until finally she merged into what looked like a playground. She paused and began to laugh. It was the back of the elementary school that Michael went to. Jody let out a breath, hitching her little brother more firmly on her back and began walking again. She ran through the town. It wasn't long before the sun rose. People in their yards on their way to begin the search once again began to cheer when they saw Jody carrying Michael and gathered around until one man gently pushed the two into his truck and took them home. A doctor came to the home that very morning. Michael's a healthy child who, despite having been a bit bruised and scratched up, was otherwise in perfect health. The news crew cried over his safe return and Michael smiled and laughed. Their mother was overjoyed. She completely forgot about grounding Jody. Everyone talked about how lucky they were that everything turned out so perfectly. But Jody knew something was wrong. Michael didn't care about Lego Movie anymore. She put it on herself and her little brother said he'd rather take a nap. Michael started sleeping more and talking less. That bouncy, exuberant child was replaced with a more so child, older than his age. But more than that, Michael whispered to himself when he thought no one was listening. Jody could even swear that she walked in on him one day and his pupils were tiny slits like a snake. Jody wanted her little brother back so badly that she looked the other way. She didn't think about those strange little things because if they weren't crazy, they were at least explainable. He was a little boy who went through trauma. Of course he's changed. That's what Jody told herself. Until she walked in on her brother kneeling before the fireplace in the living room. He held something in his hand and Jody could just hear him. Thank you, Michael. Michael said, but Jody felt her whole body go cold. He's speaking with that terrifying deep voice that had laughed at her in the forest. Thank you, your body is perfect. I have it so young that it'll grow used to me. Normally I get damaged old things. Having a child water into my hands, well, I can't thank you enough. But it's time we go our separate ways. Goodbye, Michael. Michael, or whatever Jody thought was Michael, stood up. Jody ducked out of the way, and she waited until she thought it was safe. But knowing that voice, nothing is safe anymore. In the fireplace was Michael's prized Lego man. It began to twist in the fire, and Jody didn't even think before she reached in and grabbed it. It burned, and her skin immediately tried to bond to the little plastic toy. Jody dropped it to cradle her hand. She waited until she thought it was cool and poked the toy. It was still warm, but it wouldn't hurt her. She clutched the Lego man to her chest with a throbbing hand. She paid the burn no more. She felt she deserved it. Her heart and mind were solely focused on the little Lego man that she herself used to hate. She'd never let it go again. She especially would never allow Michael to know she had it. But then again, Jody doubted she could ever truly keep anything away from that nightmare voice and its children. People forgot that Jody was the reason Michael went away. To them, Jody was a heroic sister who stayed out searching in the dark forest at night and single-handedly rescued her brother, but they were wrong. Jody didn't know what that thing was, wearing her brother's face, but it wasn't her brother. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you guys enjoy this type of content, I will definitely do more stories and nail art that matches the story. It doesn't always have to be creepy, it doesn't always have to be a ghost story. Let me know down below if you were interested in this and if you would like more. Here are some of the photos right here that inspired this nail design. And here are the two creators that inspired this video idea. So make sure you check them out if you haven't already. So I'll see you guys later and happy Halloween. Bye.